Welcome to Front and Center with Jackie Jordan. Jackie Jordan, it's Marla Maples. I hear you've got a new iHeartRadio podcast, Front and Center, making things happen. So here's to all the people who are making impact. Have a great time. God bless. This is Front and Center with your host, Jackie Jordan. Entertainment and pop culture expert Jackie Jordan is with us. Two-time Emmy-nominated Hollywood producer Jackie Jordan. We are the show where we talk with the change agents, the storytellers, and the activators from behind the scenes, making impacts. And joining me is co-host Phil Barb. With show producer Stephanie Cobian. I, I'm a war myself. I'm a war movie myself. What I do is provoke conversations and provoke a creative process. I can tell you, Tommy Lee Jones, when you go to do an interview, he already sets you up. Welcome back to Front and Center. And today we were talking to the behind the scenes people who are impacting collective storylines and collective narratives. I'm joined with Stephanie Cobian, show producer and co-host Philip Andrew Barb. We are the series we, where we meet the behind the scenes storytellers, change agents and activators that affect and impact collective narratives. Mm-hmm. And if you're sticking with the sequence, you'll follow a bigger theme of a storytelling that I am sharing with you. And I like to say, you know, I've been saying this with everybody, but joining us as a friend of mine, and I really do have some really cool friends. So <laughs> let me just say Sandra de Castro Buffington. Being the inspiration in the business in Hollywood has inspired 565 storylines on 91 TV shows across 35 networks, platforms in the span of just three years. This Brazilian light (laughs) literally goes into production companies and showrunners and producers and kind of gives them a shake up (laughs) of what's going on in the world. And they incorporate in shows like Grey's Anatomy. Welcome, Sandra. Thank you, Jackie. It's so good to be here. Yeah. Talk about now. This is another true superhero. How how is tell us some of the shows you've done and how you how you do what you do. And I've seen. Every Grey's Anatomy, if you have any of those okay, to share. Okay, good. Well, then we'll we'll talk about one, Every one episode in particular. But what show haven't I worked with is almost the, those that 565 storyline number was only in three years, and I've been doing this for 11 years. Anyway, what I, my role is one of a story whisperer. So I'm behind the scenes. No, you don't. You won't see my name anywhere. No credits. Not on the no back row credits. credits. But I have a partnership. I've, I've had a partnership with the Writers Guild over a decade. And what I do is provoke conversations and provoke a creative process with the entertainment industry. So we get about 100 writers and producers in the room, and I throw out a topic. And so I'm going to use an example. About 18 months before the explosion of Me Too that nobody knew was coming, my intuition, because I work on intuition. I'm a meditator and I get a lot of guidance that way. My intuition was focus the industry on rape culture, sexual consent, and human trafficking. Mm. My rational brain says, you don't want to do that. But my intuition was insistent. You do it and you do it now. So we started with a series of panel discussions at the Writers Guild on these topics. And I bring in the most edgy people I can find a woman who had been trafficked at 14 and survived, Uh, the assistant chief of police, who's a woman who came in full blue uniform with a gun on her hip. Um, You know, we bring in experts, and we also bring in industry people who have created storylines that are related to the topic. We start a conversation. And this was all around trafficking, rape, and sexual consent. And at the end of the night, I say, for those of you who would like to do a deeper dive, next week we're going on a story tour. We can accept 20 people, so sign up tonight. And I curate trips into the community. So we go all around L.A. For example, we went to the LAPD and met the entire human trafficking task force. We went to a secret house that rescues 12 to 17-year-olds from trafficking. You know, we met with a lawyer who represents trafficked people. So what happens? Five major shows call me up afterwards and say, we're doing the story. 
will you bring the experts into the writer's room? So as you can see, it starts with a big group, gets to a smaller group, and now we're down to five shows. And I match experts to their topics, and we go in and we spend hours with them asking questions and taking notes. So we'll talk about Grey's Anatomy, <laughs> as I promised. So some of you may have seen that just this past March, um, Grey's Anatomy had an episode that aired called Silent After All These Years, and it was on rape. And that show was so powerful, and I'll unpack it a little bit in a minute, but I'll jump to the result. The National Rape Hotline number, which is run by RAIN, this organization, said there was a 43% increase in calls to the national hotline number immediately after that Grey's Anatomy episode aired. Wow. What does this tell us? Well, first of all, the research shows this too. Storytelling has the power to transform our world. It has the power to move us to action. It has the power to inspire us. It has the power to predict our future. And you have also taken people worldwide on yes. your tours. You've because you've invited me to one of your trips in India. I mean, you've taken yes. uh, groups. So way back, I think it was two thousand to LA, I got a download in meditation saying, do your part to unite East and West, because these downloads come in headlines. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> it's like startling. I'm like, oh, okay, well, how do I do that? And the, then I, I got a download of a complete template, and it was, go work with Bollywood the way you work with Hollywood, and then bring them together, Hollywood and Bollywood. So I started my very first story tour was to not just India, I actually took a group of writers who had come out of the showrunners training program out of the Writers Guild. I first took them to Johannesburg, South Africa. And then from Johannesburg, we flew directly to Mumbai, India. And you know, here are people who probably spend a lot of their time in writers' rooms or on sets. And I am taking them into the you know, second largest slum in the world. We're going into the city dump where 300,000 people live in Mumbai. Not to get depressed, but to actually get inspired by the people who are change agents. Three young kids who grew up in the city dump who went on to college, and now they're community organizers. Okay, this is why I cry. It's so moving. Well, the result of that particular story tour was that we had an amazing showrunner with us in South Africa by the name of Carol Barbie. And she was the executive producer of the show Touch at the time. And we heard a story about a community solution to domestic violence in South Africa. And she wrote that into season one, episode three of this series, Touch, uh, that starred Kiefer Sutherland. And she recreated South Africa on a hill in L.A., and it was so beautifully done. Well, what happened is South African television also picked up the story, and they incorporated this story into one of their series, and this practice, this community solution, I better tell you what it is, is that instead of ignoring violence, what like most countries in the world do, when they hear violence going on in a home, everybody in the community runs home and grabs a pot and pan, pot or pan from the, from the kitchen and a spoon. And they go stand on the lawn or right in front of the building where the violence is taking place and they start banging and clanging, banging, clanging. It's a cacophony. Imagine a whole community banging, clanging. And what it says is, we see you. We are witnesses, and we are protesting, and we will not stop until the violence ceases. Love it. Oh, yeah. And it works. When you start getting these type of storylines into shows, you're really making an, an impact. Now I have to go back to Grey's Anatomy. Because with that rape episode that had the huge impact, why were so many women motivated to make a phone call and report their rape or that of a relative? At the end, when this survivor is being wheeled down this long hallway in the hospital to go to surgery, all of the women staff in the hospital have lined up. Beautiful theme. Right? On both sides of the hall. And they're standing in silent witness, look at this, and love for this woman who survived. And they just stand there fully present. And she is just blown away that she's not alone. 
She doesn't have to stand alone because all of the women staff in the hospital stand with her. So you're making me cry. I remember, <laughs> I remember the scene, it's, right? Yeah, I you think saw it, it. I think it. Yeah. You know what what you're doing and what you're talking about is is it really does show, um, you know, for so many of us that are in entertainment and you know with the the nature of what this is, the power of the storytelling and the power of of media and what we're able to do yes you know and i think you saw um you know they saw it in music uh i don't know if it was last year before when uh a rapper uh logic had a song that was the it was basically the song was like the suicide hotline right you know and it was like so you have all these kids all across the all across the country across the world that because of a three-minute song were able to feel inspired or, or, or at least not alone and knew they had an answer. Right. And I think sometimes it's, it's easy to assume that we know these things, that, oh, you, like, you can call this number, but a lot of people don't grow up knowing what the possibilities exactly. are, and they don't know, and until they have access to it. Yes, and they sometimes don't know that television even, is still know only an the yes. only form of communication. It's totally. So I mean, especially if these things, you know, when these things are going on within households, sometimes the TV is the only the only escape. Escape, the, and or, and it's in. So I think that shows the power of as people in media, as people in entertainment, as musicians, art, like the responsibility and in, in the opportunity that we have. Yes. To use it to be able to connect the world rather than push each other away. That is exactly why I do the kind of work I do. See, I started my career in developing countries. I worked for 20 years overseas in the poorest countries in the world. And that's where I started working with television because exactly as you both said, my goal is to reach the people who are not even asking the questions. And one of the things we learned from research all over the world is that if you make something a household word, Something that may be taboo or not known, if you make something a household word, which means people talk about it at home, it's a predictor of mass change. Or a negative change, as we just saw with our previous guest, Essie Bagheri, who was a child soldier who was labeled a terrorist. Could you label another person something scarier right. than a terrorist? You know, and in that case, he was He's a child. Yes. You know, and I think along lines what you're saying and, I, and how I'm just relating to what you're saying is that some of my background in the media has also been observing how there's been exploitation and manipulation within the industry. And I think that it's so why this part of my life is about bringing what you do forward mm -hmm. because you don't know, you don't know the manipulation side of it. You don't can't know the positive side of how it goes. And if you're not informed, you don't know how you're being, what you're receiving in, in those in those stories. And it's so, easy to justify when we're in those situations where we're making decisions that we feel, like, it's easy to justify, oh, it's not that big of a deal. It's this thing. And it's like, it is a big deal. Yes, it's a big deal. And we also know it's always story first. So a lot of do-gooders try to disguise finger wagging uh, creatively. It doesn't work because there is... A theoretical framework in the social science literature, getting really wonky on you, so stay with me. What does it mean? Okay, we're in a movie theater. Think about your favorite movie of all time. What happens? We lose track of time. We forget our surroundings. We come to care deeply about the characters, don't want the story to end, and we go into total suspension of disbelief. That is transportation. That's from compelling storytelling. That's what has the power to move someone to action to increase our knowledge to shift our attitudes to change our behavior transportation so conversely if you're finger waggy let me tell you what the message is here it doesn't work so it's story first it's entertainment first and this is why a lot of people call what i do content integration you have also impacted storylines not only on social issues but on health issues as well I connected two women Harvard human genome mapping scientists to Gray's Anatomy. This is some years ago now, but nobody knew what human genome mapping was back then. And so Gray's Anatomy got so inspired. I remember that initial phone call. They opened a human genome mapping lab in Seattle Grace Hospital <laughs> on the show. And so then they had a whole season of programming around human genome mapping. And they even had their lead actors tweeting to their fan bases about human genome mapping. Is that satisfying for you? Do you get emotional satisfaction from seeing the results of your work? It is what I live for. It is. It has been a driving force for me to 
uplift people and to, you know, make their worlds better. I, ever since I was a kid in South America, you know, it was, that's my driving force. So it is satisfying. And how do I know we're making a difference? I mean, that's the other question. It never feels like enough. We have a segment, um, Photospire, okay. which is an inspirational photo right. that's online. So mm. it would be hashtag Photospire. Um, what would be a recent photo that you've either posted or seen posted online maybe in the last 30 days? Can I pick two? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so one of them is uh, mothers from Israel and mothers from Palestine. Did you post or you saw it? I saw and reposted. And they are marching together for peace. These are the mothers. Mm -hmm. And they say, we don't want our children killed anymore. Mm -hmm. So uniting areas that have been historically in such conflict and brutalized each other. And it's the women, the mothers who stand up and say no more. Oh, my God. Okay, so that's <laughs> that's one. Uh, the other is... The, the, all of the stories that are coming out now of instead of sending a child to detention in school for misbehaving, they send them to meditation. And the research shows that meditation in schools can bring violence and bullying down to zero. Thank you so much, Sandra, for Thank joining you. us. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Up next, this behind-the-scenes legend has interviewed the biggest names in Hollywood, Find out how her work has made an impact. The secret of selling a movie is not talking it to death. It's opening it with something soft enough to get a local producer who you need to play it, to play it. Looking back on this career of 30 plus years, which I think is wonderful, are you surprised about what happened to you, that you're famous and, 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 are, and are you comfortable with the fame? Uh, sometimes more than not. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook at TV Gusbert. Alex Detail was a child genius who saved the world from the evil harvesters. But a decade later, this mysterious alien force has returned and Alex is no longer a prodigy. Now, in order to save the world again, he must survive his kidnapping, find his evil clone, and get his ship to the planet Pluto, where he will uncover the universe's ultimate power. Alex Detail's Revolution, a thrilling new novel by Darren Campo. Buy online or wherever books are sold.